Hello all, welcome to oratennis.com. In this session, we'll discuss about one of the key functionality in Oracle Fusion ERP that is called Security Console. So let us understand what is the capability of it and what is the need of it. So the first thing is Security Console is one of the application uh, standard functionality, I can say, using which we can control the creation of a user, role, API, certification, LDAP synchronization, lot number of things. So using this particular role, we can control larger number of very key functionalities in Oracle Fusion ERP. So let us understand them in one by one. So the first thing you can observe is like once you navigate to the security console, you should be able to see this particular screen. And the first one, what we have is a role. So Using this particular screen, you can try to create a role, edit, copy, and compare. And what is the role? What is the purpose of a role in Fusion ERP? Everything in Oracle Fusion ERP is based on a role-based access control. So if you want to control your system based on a user login, you need to have a specific role. Then only you can access a specific page, and you can access a specific PU, and all the things are getting controlled via a role. OK? so. You can see a couple of tables wherein the data gets stored. The first one is per user roles. This is the information. Or like I can say here, if you come from the bottom, PR roles, D and PRD. So this is the table where it's a PER, not PR. So from this particular table, you should be able to get the role which is available. And this one is a translated table. Now coming to the first two tables are user tables. Like this is a standard user table wherein you have the user information. If at all, if a role is assigned to user, that information will be available in the per user roles table. Okay, so these are some of the four tables which using which you can try to get the information whether a particular role is assigned to user or not. So you can observe here per user roles PUR, per users, per roles DNTL, and the per roles DNPRD. And you can observe here PU.userID. We have joined with the PUR.userID. And then the PUR.role ID we have joined with the PRDT.role ID. So nothing but so it this particular one, the first table which we mentioned has a link between the role ID as well as user ID. Whenever a role is assigned to the user, the data will be available in the per user roles. We'll have a role ID. And if you want to get the role name, you get the data from the role tables. Okay. This is all about roles. Now coming to the next one. Users. So what are these users? First thing is this is not a person. This is not HCM person. This user account is a Fusion application login user. Okay, using this particular screen, you can add a user, disable it, change the password, you can lock it, you can reset the password. So a couple of functionalities you can do it from this particular screen. And the same thing, how do we get the data from the backend, right? So the second table here, the per users, right? This is a table in which you have the information about the Fusion application user. And if at all, when you create a user, right, you can link that user to a HCM person. If at all, if you have linked that user to a HCM person, you can join with a person ID. And if at all, if you want to get the user name, and if you want to get a user email, you can join the other tables. Like you can observe here, Person ID, we have joined with the PAPA person ID. And similarly, in all the remaining tables, you can join with the person ID to get the full name and username of this particular application user. You can observe here this username, what we mentioned is application user. And this is the HCM person number, HCM username, HCM full name, and HCM email address. Okay. Now, coming to the next one. So it shows the analytics. It's more of, you know, like uh, just a a system admin point of view, not much advantage for us, but you can observe here how many roles are there and what is the hierarchy of it. Like um, you want to visualize as a graph, you can observe this particular analytical screen. So you have not mentioned any table details for this one. And the next one is the certificates one. So whenever you want to integrate your Fusion ERP with uh, other third party systems, you need to have a PGP key and the respective security key uploaded here. And yeah, we don't have table details for this one. The next one is a user categories. So this user category is nothing but whenever you are trying to create a user, and if you want to follow a specific category, like uh, some naming convention for that user, you can generally follow this particular user categories. And the data of this particular user category gets stored in the this particular table, AAC user categories B. And it just simply has the information of this one. Other one, the remaining single sign-on and API authentication, they are majorly used for the purpose of LDAP linkages as well as third-party system integration. So single sign-on, let us say, if at all, if you want to integrate Fusion ERP with the LDAP synchronization of your, any of your customer account, 
then you require to configure the single sign on now coming to the other one api authentication this again the name itself says api authentication if at all if you want to have integration between third party system and with the fusion erp then you have to configure this relevant api here and based on that you need to pass appropriate token so that we can manage the communication between two systems and the administration again is just more of a naming convention like it's it has information about how do you manage the role what's the preference of role category and all those things so we'll see all these particular details now from the fusion erp screen so now i'll just log into one of my erp instance let us say i'm in the fusion erp instance now the first thing here you can observe here i've logged in with a user called fa 16 student and next i'll click on tools and now this user is having a role specific role so that that's why this user was able to see a security console so to access security console for the user you need to have a role called it security manager if at all if user is having it security manager they can access the security console page now the first thing is let us say i would like to create a user right so let's say i'll create a user i'll click on users and then it says add user account and here it shows the category, right? So we, we have two categories. I just created one more category. The XXORIZE was my, the custom category which I created. Default was a standard one, which is already available. Let's say, I'll say ERP user. ERP user. And yeah. Welcome one. Welcome one. So the username is erp.user, save and close. So what I've done, security console, click on users and click on add users, add user account. So the username is erp.user and yeah, username is this one. And we have not mentioned any email. If at all, if you want to mention the email, you can mention that. Okay. Yeah, so now what we do is I'll just log in this user erp.user1 using the another browser and now i'm just logging with a erb.user in the chrome in the incognito mode yeah so this user is not having any role and you can observe here if a user does not have any role so by default a standard functionality i was able to see only tools and others and there is no security console mentioned for this user why because if you observe this user there are no roles available for this user at all. So definitely this guy will not have access to any other functionality at all. So let us say if you want to access general ledger, if you want to access AP invoices, so the relevant role should be available. Let us say I want to access security manager. So then the next thing what you have to do is for this user erb.user, you need to add a role called IT security manager. Let's try that. I'll add a role called IT security manager. Now here I'd like to go with the standard one, select that, done seven clouds so now i added a user but if you try to refresh this erp.user screen that may not be available in an instant right so whenever you add a role or whenever you change any of these authentications right so next thing what you need to do is if at all if you add a role to the user or if you create a new role that won't be available to the users instantly so there is a need there is an explicit functionality you have to run nothing but you have to run a ess job let us run that Right, so let's say. So here you have to run the job called import user and role application security data. So once you run this job, what will happen is it will synchronize the role information with the LDAP store, LDAP security related tables, and then the user should be able to view the role which we assigned. So let's wait for that couple of minutes, maybe probably. I'll just go here. It won't be available at this much fast. Definitely, it will take a couple of minutes. OK. So now, so until unless you add a role, this user does not have any functionality. Even let us say if you try to access report and analytics, you can observe that this particular functionality, you should be able to see all the reports in the read-only mode. Let's see that. So I just clicked on Browse and Catalog. Yeah, so here if you observe create, you don't have the create 
data model functionality first of all and let us say if you try to check the any of the standard reports you may not have proper functionality for execution also and it is not even showing the reports actually right so it doesn't this user does not have any proper functionality now let's wait for a couple of minutes so that this user will get the security console functionality also in some scenarios what you can do is just try to log in and log out as we already ran the job it just takes one minute to update the functionality so let's try i'll just logging in logging out now yeah, without user right so now if you observe tools right uh, thus like this user is having the security console access now right so now we can just click on security console once you have a security console yes you can assign the roles which are roles which you want and you know like um you can access the relevant functionalities okay so this is all about you know like a security console in fusion erp wherein you can control the overall system in the fusion erp right so when you get the instance access for the first time if you don't have the proper role if you don't have a proper credentials this is the place where you can modify it so in some scenarios we also have a rest apis like uh, in respect to the roles and users we have the rest apis using which we can control the creation of a role assignment of a role enablement of a role or maybe uh, like a password reset these all things you know we can control so in the next session we'll discuss more on the rest apis for the roles as well as users thank you